Hey there everybody, this is Spencer. I just wanted to go over my sharpening technique because I've got a lot of emails and questions about how I do this because my pictures look really sharp and to be honest with you, I actually spot sharpen them. So I've got this image here of this dragonfly. I believe it's called a, uh, I think he's called a blue dasher, but anyway, as you can see, he's on this stick right here, this dead leaf. And I've got a lot of background here that's very blurred. So this is kind of the way I do things as far as sharpening something like this. Is I'll go and by the way I'm using Elements 13, but this will work in Elements 11 or 12. It'll also work in Photoshop if you have CS3, CS4, CS5, CS6. If you have Photoshop CC, um, this I think you can even do this in Lightroom 5 and Lightroom 6 because I think you have an adjustment brush for sharpening now. So, but I'm working in this right now and you can easily do this. I'm in the expert mode and I have my layers panel over here showing. If you, if you need to see that, you can come down here to where it says layers and just click on that. And what that does is that will show or hide that panel on the right hand side. So that's not, that's not too hard. All right, so to sharpen this, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer of the exact same content that we have here. So this is background. It's got this dragonfly on here. So to create a new layer that has the exact same information on it, because we're gonna end up masking this here in a, in a minute. On PC, that would be Control J, J is in Jack. On Mac, that would be Command J. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on that. This is layer one. So it's the exact same picture we just had before. Here's another little trick if you didn't know this. If you put your little cursor on top of the word, in this case layer one, and you double click, it'll actually highlight, allowing you to give it a name. So, so there we'll call that one sharpen to keep it nice and straight. All right, so this is actually the layer obviously I'm gonna sharpen on. So in elements, we go under the enhance tab at the top now if you're using something uh, Photoshop product like the CS or the CC you'd want to go under filter and then choose sharpen under here so and it's a little bit different but easy enough you've got choice of unsharp mask or adjust sharpness now adjust sharpness is the newer technology of the two so I'll go ahead and just choose that one and what's nice about adjust sharpness is this issue right here, this little option, is you can choose to remove one of these things, Gaussian blur, lens blur, motion blur. So I'm kind of coming at this from a photography standpoint, so lens blur would be good. I always leave the radius at 1.0 px, and what radius does is it basically tries to enhance the edges of things. So if you start cranking this up to anything past 1 or even 1.5, you might get what's called haloing in your images and that's where people start to glow edges start to glow it just looks a little odd so for the amount as you can see now this is at a hundred percent my documents actually at 200 percent but now i can really see what it's doing there is a preview checkbox right here so you can see if you turn this on and off I don't know if it's showing up on the video, hopefully it is. You can see that especially right here in his eyes and his wings, there's no sharpening, then he looks really sharp. Now you can adjust this from 1%, which is practically nothing, all the way up to 500, and that's really sharp. So probably not what we want for this particular image. So let me back this off a little bit. Now I have already prepped this for the for web. So this would be good for email. Um, again, if you're doing anything with blogs, websites, eBay, any of that kind of stuff, this would be perfect. So I'm just gonna go, gonna go ahead and just kind of pick something here, whatever looks good, and I'm just gonna turn my preview on and off. Now you want to look sharper, but you don't want to look like you've gone over the top and sharpened it, if that makes sense. So I'm a little bit conservative on my sharpening, so eh, something like that maybe. So we'll call that good. Uh, again, don't get hung up on this particular number. I stopped at 101% because, um, you know, depending on your image, depending on your subject, it might need more, it might need less. So some you just kind of play with. You do have this option down here, the shadows and highlights, and I find this to be very confusing. <laughs> and I, to be, I never use these, to be honest with you. So I don't even bother going in there. I find this does everything I need right here. So I just go ahead and click OK. 
So now what we're seeing is the sharpened version and it's on our sharpen layer. So I don't want to sharpen all this background, especially if you have a high ISO picture, like you shot something at 6400, um, not something you want to do. So this is actually what I do with all my images for something like this is in here you have this create new layer mask button. Now if I were just to click this, I'm going to get a white mask. And then what I would have to do is I'd actually have to paint the background to turn it off. Well, that would take a whole lot of time. So I'd rather just turn the sharpening off on the whole image and then just paint back in just the little dragonfly. So to do that, if I press and hold option, and that would be alt on the PC and then click on the add layer mask button right there. You'll see it's going to add me a black mask. So basically the sharpening has been turned off on the whole image now. So it's like it's not even there. So by using the paintbrush, I'm actually going to come back and I'm going to turn back on the sharpening layer that we just created uh, over just the dragonfly. So I'm going to come over here and grab my paintbrush. Yeah, make sure it's the one next to the pink eraser. Again, if you're using the big Photoshop, you want to make sure that again you have the this paintbrush and not the like the selection paintbrush because uh, there, there are a couple different ones. Now masks work with light, with colors of black and white. So in this case, our mask is black. So I need to paint with white. If for some reason you have different colors here, you can always click this little button right here and that will default them back. If you need to switch them, you can just click on this bent arrow right here and that will flip them back and forth. So that's not too bad. Down here, we've got our brush tool, brush mode. Now over here, we got brush. You have the choice of a hard edge brush or a soft edge brush. And you also have all these different kinds of brushes that you can pick from. I only need the default brushes. And the first number is how big it is. And also, if you look at some of these, you can see how this has a very definitive hard edge circle. So these are hard edge brushes. So I like to use something a little bit softer. So I'm just going to scroll down here to something else. So here is a soft edge brush. You can see it's kind of fading. So I'll just choose one of these. Again, the size does not matter because we can change that as we go. Just make sure your opacity is set to 100% and make sure that your mode is set to normal. This is your blending mode for the tool. All right, so basically I'm going to zoom in on my image. Now I could go get the zoom tool, zoom in, and what's going to do, it's going to knock me out of the uh, paintbrush tool. So I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut so it doesn't knock me out. And that is on the PC, that would be Control Plus. It's up there in the upper right of your keyboard. On Mac, that would be Command Plus. So I'm just going to push that a couple of times to really get close on this guy. And then of course I can use the scroll bars to navigate around here. All right, so here is his face. So we should be all good to go. So if I go ahead and just click and paint, I'm using a trackpad here today, so this might be kind of scary. Uh, go out and get you a Wacom tablet. I've got one out in the office. Uh, I've had one for 20 years. They're an excellent product and definitely makes your life a whole lot easier. You can go check over them at uh, Wacom.com or over at B&H. So here we go. So as you can see is I'm just painting in these areas that I want really sharp. Anything that I do not go over does not get sharpened. All right, so I we'll, won't spend all day doing this. That'd be about as exciting as watching paint dry. All right, there we go. So hopefully that's coming through on the video. You can see his little legs and everything are getting sharper. Now they, they've got these wings with all these little details in them. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get all those. But the big thing that's happening here is that the background, that green blurred background is not getting sharpened. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen this leaf, this dead leaf here, because that does have some texture to it. So again, I'm just moving around. There we go. Here's another little shortcut key for you if you're working the program a lot. If you press and hold the space bar, it gives you the hand temporary so then I can click and drag to move around my image, then let go of the space bar and it gives me back my brush tool. That can save you a bunch of time. All right, so let's just go ahead and we'll keep, keep moving around here. 
Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to zoom out. So that would be on PC, Control minus on Mac. That would be Command minus. So now you can see over here in my Layers panel, here's this very strange looking uh, little diagram. But this is actually what I've painted. You can see the dragonfly with the with the stick. And if I press and hold the Option key on Mac or Alt on PC and then click on the little black and white mask, it'll actually show me the mask. And then I can go back and see if I missed any place, any little spots. So there we go. I just kind of go like something like that. And then I can go back over here and do the same thing. That, would, that was Option on Mac or Alt on PC. And then go ahead and click on that. So now if I turn this little eyeball on and off, let me see if I can zoom in a couple of clicks so you can really see how just that leaf and the dragonfly is being sharpened. And basically that's how I do my, my sharpening with anything like this. Uh, now of course you might want to save this as a Photoshop document if you want to. Um, generally I have my master Photoshop document that has all my layers, but when it gets to this point I just sharpen it and then um, I flatten them and save as a JPEG for internet or web use. So cool. So if you enjoyed this, you might like my full elements course that I just put together. Uh, it'll be down in the description in the show notes if you're interested. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. Thank you.